hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make this casual short that i'm wearing and it's basically pretty easy i made mine out of ankara which is my preferred fabric however you can use any fabric of your choice like crepe or any other fabric that you decide to use so it promises to be another detailed and fun tutorial and i hope you enjoyed the tutorial if you haven't subscribed don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button because i'm sure you're going to enjoy the video and also don't forget to leave your comments suggestions and feedback in the comment section below you also want to take note of the notes being shown on the screen right about now the measurements you need as well as how to take certain measurements It is very important that you decide where you would like your shorts to sit because that would determine how you take your measurements. So for instance, mine is high-waisted and all my measurements were taken from my high waist. If you want yours low-waisted, you definitely want to take all your measurements from your low waist, including the waist circumference at that point. To make your shorts, you need the following items. You need a ruler and I've got my long steel rule here. You'd also need a set square and a protractor. However, I've got my pattern master and if you guys would like to shop it, check out the links that I have in the description bar. You would also need your fabric scissors and I've got my favorite pair right here. You need your pencil. However, for the purpose of this video, I'll be using my marker. You'd also need your measuring tape. You need some pins. You'd also need a zipper. However, I've got two zippers here and whether you want your shorts to be high-waisted or, you know, low-waisted, you could use either of them. They're just different in length. And of course, you need your tailor's chalk. I've got this miserable piece of tailor's chalk right here. I've got my fabric as well and I'm using one yard of Ankara and that's because of my size and my short length. If you're bigger, you might need a little bit more and if you're smaller, one yard might just work for you. And of course, you need your pattern paper lastly. Start off by finding the center of your paper and what I do to find the center is I just fold my paper to, into two and then that crease line that it creates, I just draw like a vertical line right through it and there I have my center line. Then go ahead and draw a horizontal top line. Your top line is only about one inch wide. Label the right side of your pattern as the front and then the left side of the pattern as the back. Place the measuring tape vertically on the center line, starting at the point where the top line meets the center line. Then go ahead and mark out the waist to hip measurement. The formula to find the waist to hip measurement is the hip measurement divided by 4 minus 1 inch. So for example, if your hip measurement is 40 inches, your waist to hip measurement will be 40 divided by 4, which is 10 minus 1 inch, which will give you 9 inches. So the waist to hip measurement will be 9 inches. Alternatively, you can actually measure the waist to hip measurements while taking measurements on the body. But usually I forget to do that, so I just use this formula and it works well for me. You also want to mark out the crotch depth measurement, which is the vertical measurement from the waist to the crotch area. And you want to add an ease of about one quarter of an inch. The crotch depth is usually about two and a half inches below the waist to hip measurement. You also want to mark out the short length. And for me, I went to a short length of 17 inches. If you want yours longer or shorter, go ahead and use any length that works for you. Square out the waist to hip point, the crotch depth point, and the short length point. So because my table is small, I'm working with the front area of the shorts first. And as you can see, I'm only squaring out to the front area. After squaring out, go ahead and label appropriately. You want to label the waist to hip as the hip line, the next one as the crotch, and then the next one as the length. You also want to label the top line as the, as the waist rather. On the hip line, the crotch depth line and the waistline. 
mark the front hip measurements plus one quarter of an inch for the ease and again if you don't know the formula for the front hip measurement check out the beginning of the video i put the formulas for all of this and the important details there afterwards go ahead and connect this point with a vertical line as shown mark half of the vertical line and just keep that aside next extend the front crotch line outwards by a quarter of the front hip measurement so basically you want to get the front hip measurement and divide that by four and then extend the crotch outwards by whatever the value you get is with a protractor find angle 45 of where the crotch depth line meets the crotch extension line so basically i'm using my pattern master as a protractor again and you basically just want to find angle 45 which is the middle of that angle 90 degree and then on angle 45 draw a line that is one and a half inches long and then go ahead and draw the front crotch you want to make sure the front crotch touches the crotch extension the one and a half mark on angle 45 and then the half mark we put on the vertical line on the short length line mark half the round thigh measurement minus half an inch so for instance if your round thigh is 27 inches you want to go ahead and do 27 inches divided by two which will give you 13 and a half inches minus half an inch which will give you 13 inches so go ahead and mark 13 inches on that on the short length line and then connect that point to the crotch end as shown On the waistline, start your measurement from the vertical crotch line and measure inwards. Go ahead and mark the front waist measurement plus one inch for the dart. So go ahead and check out the formula again. If you don't remember how to get the formula for the front waist, I put it in the beginning of the video. And then with a hip curve or your pattern master, if you're like me, connect the points where the front waist stops back to the center line as shown. And now to put in the dart, you need to find the center of the waistline and then put a mark there like so. And then mark half the dart measurement to the left and half of the dart measurement to the right. So for instance, if your dart is one inch, which is what I left, you're going to mark half an inch to the left and half an inch to the right. Afterwards, go ahead and square down the center line by four inches and then connect the dart legs as shown. Lower the vertical front crotch line by a quarter of an inch and then connect this point back to the side seam point with the slant line as shown. At this point, we are now done with the front pattern and it's now time to move on to the back pattern. So guys, likewise for the back pattern, you want to square out the waist to hip point. You want to square out the crotch depth point. You also want to square out the short length point and label appropriately, just like we did for the front. On the hip line, the crotch line and the waist line, mark the back hip measurement plus one quarter of an inch for ease and then connect this point with a vertical line as shown. Mark the center or half of the vertical line. We'll need this later when we want to draw the back crotch. Extend the back crotch line outwards by half the back hip measurements. So for instance, if the back hip measurements that you have is 11 inches, you're going to extend the back crotch line or the crotch line rather by five and a half inches outwards as shown. With your protractor again or your pattern master if you're like me, 
find angle 45 degrees of that 90 degree angle and the 90 degree angle is formed where the crotch extension line meets the vertical crotch line so after finding angle 45 draw a line there and mark two inches on that line go ahead and draw the back crotch making sure it touches the crotch extension line the two inches point and then the center of the vertical line as shown on the waistline mark three quarter of an inch inwards from the vertical line and then connect this point with a slant line to the center mark on the vertical line starting from the new crotch line which is marked as x in this video measure the back waist measurement plus one inch for the dart so guys that's a mistake not back hip but back waist measurement go ahead and draw in the side seam with the hip curve again i'm using my pattern master and if you would like to shop this do check out the links that i have in the description bar next mark the center of the back waist and square down by five and a half inches this is so that we can put in our dart and if you notice the back dart is longer than the front dart afterwards Go ahead and put in half the dot measurement to the left, which is half an inch, and half the dot measurement to the right. So basically, because the dot is one inch, you're putting half an inch to the left and half an inch to the right as shown. Connect the dot legs as shown. Raise the new crotch line by a quarter of an inch and then connect it back to the side seam with a slant line as shown. On the short length line, mark half the tie measurements plus half an inch. However, because I wanted mine a bit free, I ended up adding one and a half inches as opposed to half an inch. Afterwards, go ahead and connect the crotch extension to the point on the short length like I'm doing right now. However, I find that it's easier and nicer to have a slightly curved line. So I went ahead to use my pattern master again, just to connect that point with a slightly curved line. If you have just the ruler, a slant line works well as well. So go ahead and label the pattern as back and then go ahead and cut up your pattern. After cutting out the pattern pieces, it is now time to cut out your fabric. So go ahead and fold your fabric into two. And because I'm being miserly with my fabric, I'm being careful so that I don't, you know, fold it the wrong way. So I've gone ahead to check and it's going to be enough for me. So the first thing to do is to pin your back piece onto your fabric like so. And then go ahead and mark out the allowances. You want to mark out an allowance of one inch at the side, one and a half inches at the hem half an inch at the crotch, half an inch at the inseam and half an inch at the top. After marking out the allowances, go ahead and cut. And like I said, because this is all the fabric that I have, I didn't want to cut from the bottom because I need the other part for the band. So go ahead and cut out your back piece like so. Put the back piece aside after cutting and then go ahead and pin the front pattern to the fabric and mark up the sewing allowances. Again, the sewing allowance that I used before 
is one inch at the side seam, one and a half inches at the hem, half an inch at the inseam, half an inch at the crotch, and half an inch at the top. After marking out the allowances, go ahead and cut out your front pieces. You need to keep your scrap pieces, like I said, the one I removed from the bottom is what I'm going to be using for the band and then you're going to need some of this one for the fly. So make sure you keep your scrap pieces. Mark the dart on the fabric or transfer the dart from the pattern onto the fabric and the easiest way for me to do that is to create notches at the dart leg and also use a pin and a chalk to mark where my dart stops. As you can see, I'm doing that now. Afterwards, go ahead and unpin the pattern from the fabric as shown. Pin the back crotch together and then go ahead and sew the back pieces together at the crotch on a half inch sewing allowance. So you basically want to sew from the top all the way to the bottom as shown. You also want to make sure that you sew the dart in place. After sewing the crotch and the dart, this is what the back piece looks like. So I'm going to put this aside and then we're going to repeat the same thing for the front, however with a slight variation. So for the front, go ahead and mark the front dart on the fabric as well and then go ahead and pin the crotch together. After pinning the crotch together, Mark 8 inches from the waist vertically and then go ahead and sew the crotch from that point, from that 8 inch mark all the way to the end of the crotch extension on half an inch sewing allowance. You also want to sew the dart in place. After sewing the front crotch, you should have an opening at the top and if it was sewn correctly, your opening should measure about 8 inches. Next, go ahead and cut out the fly. To cut out the fly, you need to measure a piece of fabric that is nine and a half inches long and two inches wide. Remember to make the end slightly curved as shown. So at the end of the day, after cutting out your fly piece, you should have something that looks like this. Again, please remember that all these measurements are because my trousers or my shorts rather are high waisted. If yours were like low waisted, your crotch depth will not be this long. And of course, your fly will definitely not be this long as well as your zipper allowance will not be eight inches long. So please take into consideration and then modify this based on your short measurement or your short fit. To sew the fly in place, open up the front piece and then pin the fly piece to the center front of the left side as shown. Sew the fly to the center front on a half inch sewing allowance. So basically the front crotch is the center front and then the back crotch area is the center back just in case you didn't know. After sewing, go ahead and top stitch the fly in place. Starting from the joining where the center front meets the fly, mark half an inch outwards towards the fly. After marking out the allowance on the fly, go ahead and pin the left side of the zipper to the allowance that you've just marked. You want to make sure that the right side of the zipper is against the right side of the fabric. If you would like a more detailed tutorial on how to fix the zipper, do check out the video that I've made. I'll put a link in the iCard above as well as in the description bar below. Go ahead and sew the zipper in place. After sewing the zipper, it should look like this and as you can see, it looks a bit off. However, it will all make sense shortly.
The next thing to do is to mark half an inch on the other center front piece. After marking out the allowance, go ahead and pin the zipper to it and then sew the zipper in place. After sewing the zipper, here's what it looks like. So the next thing to do is to unzip the zipper and then pin the fly in place. You want to make sure that the fly is pinned nicely and that the joining is just where it should be. Mark one one quarter of an inch on the side with the fly and you want to mark this all the way till you get to the end and then draw a curve at the end. Go ahead and sew along this marks as shown. After sewing, it should look like this and at the back your sewing should grab the fly piece. So basically this is what the back of mine looks like after sewing. Place the back piece on the front piece so that the right sides are facing each other. Go ahead and pin the sides together. And mark out the sewing allowance of one inch afterwards go ahead and sew together you want to make sure that you repeat this for the other side as well after sewing the sides this is what it looks like Go ahead and place your shorts on the table so that you have the front crotch on one side and the back crotch on the other side. Then now it's time to hem the ends. So hem the ends by folding in half an inch and then one inch since you left an allowance of one and a half inches. So basically depending on what allowance you leave that will determine what you fold. But in this case we are folding in half an inch and then one inch. So I went ahead to fold all the way through and I'm holding it in place with my pins and after pinning all the way through I'm going to go ahead and sew. After hemming the ends, go ahead and pin the front crotch to the back crotch making sure the center back and the center front lines match. Sew the crotch together on a half inch sewing allowance. At this point, the shorts are almost ready and the next thing to do will be to cut out the band. To cut out the band, you need a strip of fabric that's about 3.5 inches wide, 
however you can have yours wider if you want a bigger band but for me i usually like my band about three and a half inches because when i fold it and i sew it in place it usually just gives me about an inch one quarter or something like that so after cutting out the strip of fabric to the desired width you want to make sure that it's also two inches longer than your waist measurement so for me if my waist measurement is 30 inches my strip will be 32 inches long and then three and a half inches wide Sew the ends of the strip closed by folding it into two so that the right sides are facing each other. You basically want to sew on half an inch sewing allowance at the two ends, which takes away one inch from the two inches extra already. Turn the strip inside out and then go ahead and pin the band starting from the fly area. You basically want to pin the band to the short on the inside and like I said you want to start from the side with the fly. You want to pin the band to the shorts all through the waist and you want to do that from one side until you get to the other side. At the other side, you should have some extra that is only about one inch. However, for me, I decided to cut off the extra so that's why you don't see it here. But you should have like one inch extra if you use, you know, the measurement that I mentioned earlier. After pinning the band to the waist, go ahead and sew the band in place on a half inch sewing allowance. Top stitch the band close by folding it over to the right side as shown. You basically want to fold the band over, fold in half an inch and then pin the band into place onto the right side of the fabric. After doing this all through the width of the band, go ahead and sew. You want to make sure that you sew close to the edge as shown. After sewing the band close, this is what your shorts should look like and at this point the shorts are now finished. So go ahead and fix the hook and eye onto the band and your shorts is now ready to be worn. I like this ones because they can be worn with heels, trainers, sleepers, anything and they work really nicely. Alright guys, so we've come to the very end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to leave your comments, suggestions and feedback in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!